So we are going to climb? <laughs> Will she listen to me if I tell her to go slow then? Hey, try to speak to her. <laughs> I'm running out of battery. Oh no, I'm out of power. I've come to Fréjus on the French Riviera to meet arguably the world's greatest all-round cyclist. She's the only rider in history to hold the road, the cyclocross and the mountain bike world championship titles in the same 12-month period. Pauline Ferran Provence, world champion. Despite a complex pre-season injury in 2019, she returned to her best, winning two World Cups and two world championships. Let's see what makes Pauline Ferrand Prevost such an extraordinary talent. Bonjour, Pauline. Hello. How are you? Nice to see you. One of my favourite places, the French Riviera. The sun always shines. Gorgeous, isn't it? Please come in. I will. Hey, look at them slippers. Where'd you get them bad boys? From my mother. Are they really? Yeah. You've got a cool mum. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like cycling has very much been your entire life. What are your earliest memories of being on bikes? My parents was uh, both a road cyclist, but like a national level. Oh, they were? Yeah. First, my mother didn't want me to do cycling because uh, she said that it was not a um, sport for, for a girl, you know. Did she you? wanted to, to put me on ice uh, dancing. And after one training, I said, okay, no, I want to do like you, cycling. And yeah, I started cycling uh, with my older brother. He was lazy and <laughs> yeah, sorry for him. <laughs> so I had to push him to go training. And that was how it went. And what was your first competition you went to then? At what age were you? Yeah, I was uh, five years old. You started competing yes. at five? Yeah. No way. On a road bike and... On a road bike yes. at five years old. A lot yeah. of kids can't even ride at that age. I was already really competitive and I was a bad loser, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah. One time I did second in the national and I threw away my medal and... Threw away your medal? Yeah. Oh, no. was, like, people were really shocked because, like, little blonde girl and I was really, yes... Fiery. Yeah. In 2012, uh, the Rubberbank team proposed me a contract to become professional. How old were you then? I was 18. 18? Yeah, with the biggest team in the world, so for me it was a really good moment. And on that team, you were allowed to do both road, mountain biking and cyclocross? Yes. Yeah, no, it was really important for me to keep this freedom and to do the three disciplines, so um, it's why I chose rubber long. Because you'd always done all three disciplines yes. to that point, right? Yeah. Mm. It's mad, I think you just enjoy cycling too much. Yeah, I really love cycling, so <laughs> it's... I love cycling, but not only on the road, but like all kind of cycling. All the faith they put into you, you delivered back in 2014 when you took your first elite World Cup cross-country win. I mean, Novia Mesto, I, I, I don't know, there's not many other places you'd have rather took your first mountain bike win, is there? What, yes. a, what a place to do it. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, I bet it was. Let's have a look. It's Pauline Ferrand Prevot, the French girl, the 22-year-old, out front. Absolutely on fire. No one can match her pace. And the 22 year old is going to make history here, taking her first World Cup win. Incredible ride from her. I totally didn't expect to win this race because I have, uh, I think, number 31. So. No way. Yeah, so. You so the fourth row or something? You know, I was like super good shape. I was like flying and it was. Not even super hard, so... Honestly? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And just a week after that, Alpstadt in Germany, you proved it was no fluke, your first World Cup win, by taking your second. Do you remember winning by yes. three minutes? I remember because I was a bit nervous, for sure, at the start. Because... Why, because it felt like people were looking at you for yes, the first Yes, for sure, time. yeah. And yeah, I wanted to, to win like with a big gap to, you know... Did to... you? Did yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, wait, you made a decision, I'm not just going to win, I want to win with a big gap. Yes. A sensational winner a week ago in Nova Mesto. Up the outside there. And she is going to breeze by Yolanda Nepp, her teammate. She's got the best part of three minutes to play with. And here she comes in to take the win in emphatic style. Women's cross-country man bike and has got a new superpower. 
winning is not always uh, easy. So I think you have much more uh, bad days than uh, flying days. Yeah. So um, yeah, you just have to keep pushing and to do your best. I think here you really signal to everyone that yeah, you, you can be one of the very, very best mountain bikers on earth. I don't know, we have to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they'd agree. And the success just kept coming, winning mountain bike World Cups. You know, you had a road world title as well. And actually, it wasn't too long after that that you became cyclocross world champion as well at elite level. Yeah, it was a few months later and I won the, the world championship cyclocross. And I didn't win any World Cup before, so it was also a big surprise for me. No way. And as if that wasn't enough, in 2015, you'd become world mountain bike champion as well. I mean, you won the road and the cyclocross world titles. Did you then think, I can do all three? Did that ever become your goal then? Not at all. Didn't it? No. Because it's and historical. You're the only person who's ever done it. Yeah, but before doing it, I was not even thinking. I just wanted to win this race in Andorra. Is that something you do? You don't overcomplicate yeah, you don't I didn't over pressure, you just exactly. kind of deal. Do you deal with races on a day to day basis? Yes, yes. I wanted to win in front of my family. My parents were there, my brother. Family for me is everything. And yeah, they are really a big support for me. To give them uh, this victory was like uh, so cool. Do you think it's repeatable? I hope so. <laughs> do you yeah. really? You think yeah, it's why not? not? Bravo, here she comes. So many big names that could win this race today. Where's yep. Neff? Neff back to fourth then. Bravo now to the front, making it look easy. There's a smile on her face, but she's going to make history here today. Three UCI world titles in one year. Pauline Ferran Bravo from France is your 2015 UCI Manibai world champion. So you had unprecedented success. After that, you know, your career could only kind of drop a bit, and it did for the next few years. Mm. 16, 17 and 18, really quite difficult seasons for you. It was difficult, yeah. People was expecting so much because I was a uh, world champion in all disciplines. Yeah. So mm -hmm. mentally it was hard, and physically also, because I start to have pain in the back, and we didn't find why I had this pain, so it was just too much for me. Yeah, you had kind of a bit of a burnout, like... Yes, I didn't want to do cycling and even to think about cycling and sports in general. Was that the first time that had happened? Yes. At this point I was like, okay, I said, cycling is not for me anymore, so I uh, just yeah. want to stop and to... For stop forever or stop... Yeah, I wanted to stop forever. Oh, you really quit. Yeah. Did you really? It's yeah. unbelievable, isn't it? When did the motivation to return start? The motivation come back um, because of Julian. Julian Absalon, your better half, who I think we should mention is five times world champion, like he's the man. He must be, he's a pretty good bloke to have in your corner motivating you. Yeah, he told me that, uh, okay, you don't want to do cycling anymore, but we can do other sports. So we did a rally ra race. A running? Yeah, Mega Valanche in La Réunion. The, the downhill one? Yes. Did you So really? we did a, a lot of uh, different sports and the motivation came back. Did you come back feeling like more refreshed? I was more refreshed, but uh, I was still uh, injured. After every training, I was crying and you? with pain in my legs. So my artery was uh, too narrow and uh, the, the blood was not... Uh, Passing good. Finally, I have a surgery in uh, January. No way. So the start of 2019 yeah. surgery, 2020, unbelievably, has started with almost an identical surgery. Yeah. It must have been incredibly stressful for you. Yeah. At least I knew why I had this pain. Last year, I was so happy to finally know, you know, and in my head, it completely changed. I was Did not it? the same person anymore. It fully switched Yeah, you I was not crazy, so... <laughs> 2019 was, even by your standards, spectacular. Yeah, it was like, uh, like, okay, I'm back. You took your first World Cup win 
since 2015. This must be a very special day for you. Yes, it was special. We're going out onto the last lap now with the leader. And there's Yolanda Neff behind her. The race is on then to the finish line. Neff now on the back wheel of Pauline Ferrand Prevo. Oh, and going by her. Well, Neff is not scared. Absolutely unbelievable. What's it like in a race like this? Because you were at the front as hard as you can go and Yolanda just rides up next to you. How do you control that in your head and not just give up and go, right, this is done? Yeah, I just try to fight and to find the survival uh, mode. And it's going to be a fight to get into that downhill to the finish first. Bar to bar, Neff and Provogo takes the lead. There she is. <laughs> yeah, she comes really fast. Thanks, it's why man. I really like in Yolanda, because she never give up. No, she's like you. But I think that's why you're, the, you're so successful. You've been through so much to come back to this point. Yes, I just gave everything. Who's got anything that is going to be a sprint finish? She's trying! Can Yolanda Neff come back? And you oh, see, she out. never give up because... No, she didn't give up. You have a quick look and then you go again. It's going to be Pauline for Rivo. It's so cool to see. So three weeks after that was the World Championships in Mont saint -Anne. When I did the team relay two days before the race, I was really flying and I told to the national coach that I will win this race. Did you? You know, you, you can feel it. Yeah, it was inside me and it was super nice. Pauline ferran is nearly there. Definitely uh, no, back no, no, no. to her brilliant best now. Oh, 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 and that's oh, oh, the gap oh. for the gold medal. Here you come. And I was that on fire that I was thinking it was the last lap when I attacked Rebecca, but it was still two laps. Oh no, why? Yeah. <laughs> There's Julian. So Julian is full gas. <laughs> yeah. But like, how motivating is that for you? Does it make a difference? Can you actually hear what he's saying? Because we see him on the, I watch him in commentary. And yes. Screaming away. I think he, yeah, he's more motivated than me. So <laughs> when I saw him, he's like, so crazy. I said, okay, I have to win, otherwise uh, tonight will be a big fight. Uh, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> no, I'm joking, but he He's really nice. believed on me and this is the most important for me. So he gave me this confidence and that I can win. This World Championship win, it meant as much as all the others. Maybe more? Yes, because he'd maybe come back more. From injury. Yeah. Mm. I was already crying there. So. Were you really? Yeah. French phenomenon, Pauline Ferrand Prevo across the line to take her second ever Elite World Championship title. I really couldn't see where you were going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a moment there I thought, no, oh my God, this is yeah. going to be bad. <laughs> Who do you think your big rivals are going to be in 2020? Anne Tepstra and yeah, Yolanda for sure. Kate, Jenny, it's so many. That's that, true, yeah. there is so many. It's why it's so cool. This is what, yeah, you yeah. like this. You yes. enjoy the challenge. Yeah. Pauline, it's been incredible to go through your career. You know, there is no other career like that. Julian's been a massive part of it, I know that. I'm going to go and catch up with him now, and I'm going to see you tomorrow again for a bike ride. Okay, thank Thanks you. a lot, yeah. Merci. There he is. Bonjour, Julian. Hey, Ron. How are you? Good, and you? Good, mate. Very good. Have you got, uh, I know you're a busy man, have you got une minute? For sure. Can we sit in the sun? I don't yes. see it as much as you do. Oh, it's lovely, mate. Need some facts of 50. So, Julian, I guess since you've retired, you've uh, been able to watch the women's racing more, especially with the vested interest of Pauline. What do you think about women's cross country right now? Because to me, it's like we're in this incredible golden era where it's just unbelievable to watch it. Yeah, for sure, the, the women cross country races are really interesting because you never know who will win. No. There are maybe 10, 15 uh, yeah. riders who can win. We see so many gaps open and close and people make comebacks during races that perhaps in the men's it's not so easy to do and as a result of it, I think we see better racing in the women's. Yeah, for sure. Also, um, we see more um, difference of um, technical skills. Yeah, that's true enough. I mean, you know, you've got like Yolanda, for instance, who can win races on the downhills. And then you've got Annika Langvad that can definitely win on the climbs. Where do you place Pauline? Pauline is one of the only riders who can win on each kind of tracks because she is um, good in everything. You know, Not the best in uh, something, but one of the best in everything. Yeah. 
She can win a sprint, she can win when it's really hilly and steep, it's like Mathieu van der Poel. Yeah. So they can win on each kind of track. Julian, you're an eight-time world champion. I mean, your role with Pauline, you must be more than just a partner to her. For sure. First, I'm the partner, so we don't always speak about bike, about competition, but I can try to help a little bit. But she has a coach as well, right? You don't yeah. actually do her training. No. Sometimes Barry and Pauline's trainers can ask me something, but uh, he do the plan. And even if you don't think it's right, then you keep your mouth shut and... No, because Barry is very bright, is uh, I really... You trust him? Yeah, I trust him, for sure. Would it become complicated for you and Pauline if you trained her? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, Pauline hates Barry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's good that he takes it. Yeah. You've watched her win World Cups now. Do they compare to winning a World Cup yourself? Uh, it's, it's totally different because the emotions are not the same and also the stress is, is more stressful. It's more stressful to watch yeah, than race? Because when you race, you are in your, you know what you do, you are focused on, on the riding, and that's when you watch, you, you, you don't know. Do you try and help her tactically in a race? Because we see you riding along the side of the track, shouting, and what are you, yeah. what are you instructing her? When I follow her during the races, I, I try to find some quiet place where I can give some information. Like gaps, isn't it? Yeah, I also try to, to see the other, the other women's. Um, the faces. So there's a, there's a big trust between you. You say they might be hurting a bit, now's a good time to go and she'll go. Yeah, I think, yes. I think, I think if anyone I was going to trust <laughs> to guide me in a mountain bike race, it would be you. So tomorrow I'm going riding with Pauline. Have you got any advice for me? I'm a bit stressed about it, to be honest. Maybe she can try to, to start slow. Will she listen to me if I tell her to go slow then? Is that going to work? I try to, try to speak to her. <laughs> If you can. <laughs> <laughs> Julian, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. I'm not going to lie, I've had a bit of a sleepless night worrying about this ride. How on earth am I going to keep up with one of the world's very best cyclists? Well, where there's a will, there's a way. I've just got to get Pauline's approval. Bonjour, Pauline. Hello. How are you? Good, and you? Uh, slightly stressed. You're looking quite serious. Rainbow stripes, shoes, socks and jersey. So we are going to climb. I love climbs. Four times. Even better. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> this is your first ride back after surgery, exactly, right? Exactly, yes. Look, you're five times world champion in multi-disciplines, 24 national titles. You are the greatest cyclist of a generation. So I'm using an e-bike, all right? Yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> that was easy. Let's go! For once, I'm keen to climb. Huh? Hello. Bonjour. Hello. Bonjour. Hello. Bonjour. Hey, bonjour. God, there's so many cyclists here. Yeah. Crazy. E-bike, e-bike, e-bike. Ah, it's easy, e-bike. <laughs> e-bike. <laughs> now you do all in economy, okay? Okay. This is life, you have to work. We've struck a deal. Hello. Hello, hey, Julian. How you doing, Julian, good? Yeah. yeah, man. See you later. Oh no, I'm out of power! <laughs> oh, oh my god, this ain't so easy. Oh god. I hear you, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. She gone! Made it. That's cool, huh? Well, I got through three batteries, but it was okay. <laughs> <laughs>
but you, you know, seriously, first ride back, you look good. Yeah, I came back faster than last year, so I'm pretty happy. So everyone's in real trouble then, because last year, by the end of the season, you were untouchable. Oh, yeah, I, I hope I will do my best for this year, so we will see. Bon chance. Merci. Merci. Probably a bit of, there's probably a bit of a static build-up now. Honestly, this is the first time in four years he's put a shirt on for really? Yeah, well, it's smart, isn't it? Eh? It's nice, isn't it? It's because of me, or? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, I thought I'd better look also smart. Also the hair and... World champion, yeah. the hair's not so smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. The wig. <laughs>